Hey everyone, it's TTL back with another video for you. And today I'm finally allowed to talk to you about the 6800 XT and the other cards, well, and the vanilla 6800, but it's more about the fact that it's the aftermarket cards. And uh, a day and a half ago, I finally got one from XFX. And this is actually the one I was most excited about because the design on this thing is epic. Although they're not going to win any awards for their packaging because it pretty much is a box with a card inside it. Um, but we're finally able to talk about the aftermarket cards. Now, like I said, the box on this is pretty boring. But just wait until you clap eyes on the card that's inside it. <laughs> so yes, timing has been incredibly short with this review, but I have foregone sleep to make sure I got you this card done for launch because I think it's one of the most exciting cards that are going to come out for the 6800 XT, at least around the kind of launch time. Uh, so I said the box was very kind of vanilla and boring and it was pretty much the graphics card in a box and I didn't turn it round because I didn't want you to see round the uh, back so you got that first idea and I'm still being a tease but <laughs> look at this. Now I was a big fan of the original uh, DD cards. I mean who doesn't like a DD? Double D. Yeah. Uh, anyway um, we're not going to go down the sexual innuendos today but I think they've pulled out a masterstroke with this new Merc version. Although it's kind of weird because it says Merc on the graphics card, but it also says Mercury up on that back section. So it's, you know, which way do you want to swing? I personally prefer the thought of it being called the Merc, uh, like a mercenary rather than the Mercury. So I'm not sure whether they've missed a bit of a trick with that, but anyway, so. The design is beautiful. The back plate all wraps around the side here. You've got a couple of eight pin power. You've got a BIOS switch here. Pushing it towards the eight pins is performance. Pushing it towards the front of the card is silence mode. I've tested it in performance mode. You can see that the card itself hangs out past the end of the PCB. So they've gone down a kind of NVIDIA-esque kind of cutout venting sort of mumbo jumbo-ish. But the the card itself, I have to admit, this black bit and the back plate, to me, is screaming to be taken off, because it does just look like screws, and then painted. And to be fair, if I had more time, I would have done it. But it's a beautiful design. I personally really, really like it. I can understand why some people are going to say that it's a little bit garish for them. But I think when you see it in the rig, you'll understand a little bit more about why I've completely fallen in love with this thing. So when it's in the case, all bolted in, and I will say this is just our generic graphics card test rig because we don't build a PC for every single uh, review that we do because it wouldn't be scientific then and the results would differ too much. So in the graphics card test rig, the only thing that changes is the graphics card. So that's the only way we can keep it fair. Anyway, so when it's in here, you can see the mirrored section down here for where it says 6800 XT and now you can see me moving around and you can see it's all like mirrored and the like. And I want to keep you in suspense as I turn all the lights off because when I do power it on, oh my days, is it beautiful. So when I flick the switch, I think you'll understand why I personally really like it. I mean, the white and that red RX, which is on point for M AMD branding, I think looks the gonads. Now, the only reason why the rest of the rig is on RGB puke, unicorn puke mode is because it's just left to do with its own devices. It's just a test rig. But, oh, look at that. It's just, 
it's actually so understated and so nice. I really, really like it. And then to couple it with the XFX logo at the end, which is kind of nice where it is, because so often, recently, the power cables have covered up the end logo. And because it's slightly inboard, the XFX still gets a chance to show through or shine through. And yeah, I, I'm a, I am a big fan of this design. The other thing that I will say is there's no RGB on the front face. So if I was to vertically mount this, you're going to end up with all of this nice stuff kind of pointing upwards. Might not necessarily be a bad thing, but it's just something to uh, keep in mind when you're brainstorming your next build, which could quite happily have this in it. Okay, so on to the review-y kind of uh, performance-y stuff. <laughs> So uh, I get asked a lot about the case that I've built the test rig into and it's a Corsair Obsidian 500 SE and all of, when we do our testing all of the fans that are in there are set to 1200 RPM. So then at that point what happens is the graphics card is really the only thing that is going to change and it depends on how good the graphics card uh, cooling performance is. So again, it keeps things pretty fair. Also, the CPU is a 3950X, and we've used the extra 200 megahertz precision boost overdrive kind of offset to increase the core clock a little bit. I know a lot of people are saying straight away about why are you not using 5000 series, and if I was to use 5000 series, then I have to go back and retest all of the graphics cards. And it takes me roughly a day to do just the stock results on a graphics card. Some of them take a little bit longer because they don't perform quite as well, but you get the point. Although this is something we are looking into doing, um, and then to be fair, I wish I hadn't switched to the 3000 series. I should have just waited and jumped straight for the five. But anyway, so the uh, Merc. I'm gonna talk to you about the overclocking and stuff as well, because I did a few bits with the overclocking which you might find interesting. And obviously we go about the overclocking results on these like a mate chatting in the pub. And uh, so I did a full batch of stock results so that we've got some decent baseline results and know what the card is going to be able to do well in the performance mode. And then what I did is I did a few select results with a manual overclock mainly because of time. I'm recording this the night before the NDA. So bearing in mind, I have to do the video, I've got to get the website stuff done, and I've also got a preview of another card that I need to get done tonight as well. Time is of the essence. So I've done the best that I can in a short period of time. Anyway, so with the overclock itself, what I ended up doing is I'll show you the screenshot and I'll talk you through what I've done. And that is essentially, I moved the uh, maximum clock up to 2,500 megahertz. So 2,500 megahertz, 2.5 gigahertz on a graphics card. It's nuts. Then the power draw thing on the side, I've wanged that right out to the end. And I've also moved the memory up from 2,000 to 2,100. Now, in the results, what I did is, because a lot of people haven't spoken about the fact that when you use the Radeon software for your fan RPM, when you first turn it on, what it actually does is it gives you a maximum fan percentage. Now this, when I first turned it on, was set to 36%. So for the manual overclock, what I did is I ran a 60% maximum now that doesn't mean it sits at 60%, which is wonderful. And it does this with all of the Radeon cards as well. Um, it just sets the maximum to 60. So it could go up to 60. And then what I also did is I did a thermal run with it on auto. And what you'll see between these two screenshots, which will magically float on the screen, is the difference was a couple of degrees and about 250 RPM difference. And the card was genuinely incredibly quiet to the point where I actually couldn't really hear the difference between the 60% and the slightly uh, lower one with it on auto. So one of the things I would say to you at home is unless you're a complete silence freak, but then if you're gaming, you're either going to have headsets on or uh, like noise going on anyway and it, you would literally have to have the most pickiest girlfriend wife 
kids, whatever in the world, because it's that with that 60% max, it, it was so, so quiet. Um, I would say that it's one of the things that I would suggest that pretty much everyone does at home. Also, um, I would suggest that if you are looking for just an easy fix, then you can just go and set that maximum fan speed a little bit higher and then also move the power percentage. You don't have to go right the way up to uh, 15, which is the max, you can just go to 10 and it will perform a fair bit better just by doing that. But with my manual overclock, I'll actually show you the power draw first because the power draw was 494 watts for the entire system running Unigen. Uh, and then when I uh, had overclocked it, it was still only pulling 505. So it's, it actually, even though it's quite high at stock, but opening the taps then didn't uh, make a, a huge amount of difference. Now you can see with the 3D mark results, that it did very well. Now, like I said, I've only done a few things uh, with the manual overclock. So we have a full suite of stock results. You can also go and see those on the OC3D website if you'd like to pick through the graphs. But for overclock specific manual overclock testing, I did the 3D marks, I did gears, and I did dirt. And dirt's one of the games AMD sent. So it's one of the kind of ones that you can have a look at and it keeps things kind of fair because I do get uh, a lot of people saying, I oh, use all NVIDIA games, but on the uh, talk of NVIDIA games, you're going to enjoy the control results when we get to them. But you can see that this uh, was quite happily over a 3080 founders. It was just below a 3080 founders out of the box. Um, but when you then give it the overclock, it goes that little bit step further. It's the same with the original vanilla 6800 overclock. Uh, and to be fair, when you do start playing around with them, they do do quite well in the synthetics. Dirt 5, this has happened a few times now, so I'm going to assume that this is fairly normal. Overclocking them seems to reduce the frames for 1080p to the point where it doesn't matter how much I turn it back down and how I play around with it, it just seems to go that way. But the weird thing is, is the 1440p and the, te and the 4K results do increase. So it's something to do with the 1080p. I have noticed in the past that what happens is you have a very high clock at 1080, but then as you go to 1440 and then 4K, the clock actually decreases as well. So I think what is basically happening is the 1440 and the 4K are getting that offset overclock. But with the 1080p, because it's being allowed to run pretty much unrivaled and it's actually pushing it further, I think that's actually hurting it. So the th something that I'm starting to kind of get with these now is if you're going to use it as a high FPS 1080p card, you don't really want to be overclocking them. But if you're going to one of those gamers that likes a higher resolution, so 1440 and 4K, the overclock is definitely going to serve you guys better. Um, but saying that, when we get on to one of the other games in a minute, it kind of swings the other way around. So it is game dependent and Dirt at the moment is definitely one of the ones that's not favouring the higher clocks. Now, because I do get said a lot, a lot of your games are NVIDIA based uh, and I do use control. But you'll notice with the control, this one, we do have a ray tracing graph if you'd like to go and have a look on the website. It basically performs like the old 2000 series NVIDIA cards. They do need to do a bit of work on it. Control's quite intensive though. And also you'll notice that I've not put any of the DLSS results in. I got called a paid off fanboy for doing that. But that's because my normal results are in one graph, my ray tracing results are in another graph, and then I have another graph for DLSS. And that's because I have so many graphics cards in it and I don't just test a few cards uh, for these things. So at the end of the day, one of the things that I really, really like to draw your attention to here is the 1080p and the 1440p results. So those results actually win out over the 3080 founders in one of NVIDIA's own games. 
Fair dues, if you were to turn ray tracing on, it's completely different and they really don't do particularly well. But if you're not wanting to go into control and turn that on, that's a choice you have to make at home. They, the card is very, very strong. I do think what's going to happen is AMD are going to get the ray tracing working better with drivers and DXR optimizations, which is the API that both AMD and NVIDIA use for ray tracing. So I do think they are going to get better at this. It is purely speculation, but we're at least a year in front with, um, uh, or a year behind, sorry, of the development that NVIDIA have put in. So ray tracing, if you're very, very much about that, then the results aren't particularly going to uh, blow your mind. But again, when the uh, console stuff starts to come through, it'll be quite interesting to see how things pan out. So when we move on to gears, you can see that the uh, Merc bests the uh, Founders Edition XT, which is great. It actually did really well, really strong at 1440 as well with this game. Um, again, you can go and have a look at the OC3 website if you'd like to see the 150% and 200% upscaling results, because we do test them up with 200%. You're kind of upscaling it to 8K at that point. And I know a lot of people are going to say it's not an 8K card, and I would say that's quite fair as well. It's not an 8K card. But anyway, um, Metro Exodus. This is, again, another game that very, very much favours the NVIDIAs. But at the top of the graph, the difference between the Merc and the Founders Edition, in reality, it beats it at 1440. Now, we always sort these graphs at 4K and it's the way we've always done it so it's the way we're going to carry on doing it so yes the x effects falls into third place but if we sorted it at 1440p it would go above the 3080 and uh i think that was something that genuinely genuinely was worth a shout now the f1 2020 this game seems to absolutely love and I do mean absolutely love these new cards. We don't know why, because it's not an AMD specific game or anything like that. If anything, it was supported by Nvidia. But this new architecture is absolutely blowing the doors off uh, this game to the point where we're hitting frame limits, 200 frames per second at 1080p. But the 1440p stuff and even the 4K stuff is really strong. And you can see that, <laughs> uh, yes, OK, the original XT did exceptionally well at the start, but the difference between the two uh, is very, very slight. Again, don't know whether this is like a weird driver thing, but whatever happened. Um, uh, and the other thing is, oh, it, it just loves it. Anyway, so lots of graphs. Uh, reminder that there are many, many more graphs much 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 more testing on the site if you're actually considering this and i'm going to say straight out the box i know this is the first aftermarket one that i've done i am going to say that i think it's going to be worth a shout as well because for me personally i think it's incredibly pretty i also was astounded by how well that cooler has worked stayed consistently quiet and i also showed you that there wasn't a great deal of difference between the maximum fan rpm they are pretty much gimped out of the box, but it still did a 74 degrees with an up to 36%. It was a bit mad, uh, but this with the 60%, like I said, it, it, def it gives it a little bit more room, but it doesn't get louder. It's, it's a lovely, lovely design. Um, and uh, I, I am hoping to get other aftermarket cards in. I'm gonna say right now, there will be at this moment at the time, the moment that this video goes live for the first time, there'll also be an AIO called card on the channel because I got the uh, ROG Strix. Um, I don't know about Sapphire, I have been emailing them, we'll have to see. This is turning into a bit of a subscriber video, but we, we will find out. Staying on point, which is this card. Um, I'm definitely, definitely going to give it extreme aesthetics. I personally really like it, but the other thing that I am going to give it, so it's going double bubble, and that's enthusiast grade, because XFX have pretty much, the, the, a lot of the brands have had a pretty hard time the last few years because they've not really had anything that's properly contended, and uh, stock's been short. I still think this is going to sell out really quickly, but this is an outstanding, 
outstanding card and congrats looks good performs well isn't loud isn't hot ticks all the boxes x of x have done a, the i think they this is going to be up there with the best and of the best when it comes to the 6800 xts and i know i'm starting to waffle now but that's because i'm actually quite excited by it so brilliant card two awards massive thumbs up thank you very much for getting it to me before nda anyway so this is tiny tom logan with another video for you out ding love you sis